Okay, now for question number two, part A, from the June 2019 P1 International A-Level paper. Here we are asked to simplify this fraction, which involves something in third form in the denominator. The denominator is not rational. When you simplify such an, an expression, it should be expressed with a rational um, denominator. So we have to rationalize the denominator, which is done when you have something which is made up of a combination of a rational and irrational number by multiplying what's called the by the, the conjugate. So 4 minus 2 root 2, its conjugate or what will get rid of the uh, square root is basically the same numbers with the opposite sign between them. So 4 plus 2 root 2 would be the conjugate. But if you multiply the denominator of a fraction by something, you must multiply the numerator by exactly the same thing. So we don't change the value of that fraction. Okay, so the numerator will be 4 plus 2 root 2. And the denominator will change and you'll notice what happens is the irrational part will be cancelled out. So you have 4 times 4 which is 16. Now the middle term will be 8 root 2 minus 8 root 2 which becomes 0. The root 2 term disappears. And the last term will be minus times plus which is minus. You have 2 times 2 which is 4 and root 2 times root 2 which is 2. Okay, so you end up with 4 plus 2 root 2 over 16 minus 8 which is 8. So 4 plus 2 root 2 over 8. If you want to simplify that you can take a common factor of 2 from the numerator. So you have 2 times 2 plus root 2 over 8 and we can cancel out a common factor of 2 from the numerator and denominator and you're left with 2 plus root 2 over 4. Now because they asked us to put it in this form where you have separate terms, split this into two separate fractions. So you have 2 over 4, which is a half, plus root 2 over 4, which is like a quarter times root 2. And that's the best way to express your answer in this form. Um, now, very important, I would say very important for you is to do the following. And that is uh, for you to check with your calculator. Because it's very easy to make a mistake. And if you just put exactly the same expression in your calculator it will help you to make sure that you've done the right thing and it's very important don't think that this is cheating it's not cheating it's just checking okay so put exactly what's in the question your calculator press equals and you see you have 2 plus root 2 over 4 which is the form we had before we split into two separate fractions so we can see that these are the same okay so you're checking to see that your answer is correct now if you were to have gone from this first step to this step over here without showing any steps whatsoever you would get no marks for this question because of course the examiner knows that you can just stick this in your calculator and get this answer out so showing your steps is vital in a question like this okay so showing that you multiply by the conjugate of the irrational denominator and showing how it's simplified okay showing a couple of steps to how it's simplified is very important Okay, but checking with the calculator is also important for you to make sure that you haven't made a silly mistake. Okay, that's very important for you. Now, part B uses uh, what we did in part A. If we go to part B, which is on the next page, I'll put it on the next page. Where is it? There it is. So, we, it says, hence or otherwise solve this equation. So, I've just written down what we found from part A in part B so that we can refer to it. This was the answer from part A. Now, hence means using what we just did. And if the question had said hence without the otherwise, it would mean you have to use what we did in part A only and no other way is going to be acceptable because they're saying hence. But when they say hence or otherwise, means that there are other methods that you could use to solve it if you don't use part A. Now, generally using the hence method is normally the easier way to deal with things. Okay, it's normally easier because Basically, half the work has already been done for you. So it's normally easier to use hence, but if you couldn't think about how to do hence and you knew another way, then it's perfectly fine in this type of question to then use a different method that doesn't use what you did in Pi. So first of all, you think to yourself, how am I going to use this in this equation here? Well, maybe you might not use it straight away in the beginning of the first step. So let's just sort this out. Now, a lot of people get confused when they see an equation like this because they've got all these square roots and their first uh, instinct is to let, let's square everything, okay? So they end up squaring every, every term separately. In fact, you've got to square both sides, which won't really use what 
uh, we did in the first part. So to, you know, I mean, that, that would work if you square both sides properly. You square this as like 2 root 2x two, two root 2x two plus 20 root 2, all squared. So you, you know, multiply that bracket by the bracket and you square it properly, not just squaring each term here. Okay, that would work and that would be an otherwise method, but that's going to be longer. So let's look at how to solve it in general. Now, when you have a question like this, it's just the same as saying 4x equals 2x plus 20. It's like, it's not, of course, it's not the same as this equation, but it's a similar kind of idea. You have 4 as a constant, 2 root 2 is also, it's just a number, it just happens to be irrational, but it's still a number, and 20 root 2 is just a number. It's just the same idea as this. How do you solve an equation like this? Well, you know, basic grade 6, 7 stuff, you just bring the x's on one side, you collect the x's on one side of the equation and the constants on the other. So here you subtract 2x from both sides and you're left with, you've got 4x minus 2x equals 20. So we're going to do the same thing here. We've got x terms and they have non-x terms, the, the, the number terms. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring the x terms together. So 4x minus 2 root 2 times x equals 20 times root 2. All right, I left the numbers on one side, the x's on the other. Now what you do here, you say, ah, oh, 4x minus 2x is 2x equals 20, then you go on to solve. Well, we can't exactly do this here because although I could work out what 2 root 2 is as a decimal, our answer is needed in, 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 uh, in third form, it should be in exact form. So I can't just find what 2 root 2 is as a decimal and then subtract from 4x. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take x as a factor and I'll be left with 4 minus 2 root 2. This is the same as that. If you multiply out this bracket, you get exactly the same thing. But now I've like made one x term and then I can proceed by dividing both sides by 4 minus 2 root 2. So I have x equals 20 times root 2 divided by 4 minus 2 root 2. Now I can see the similarity between this and part A. I've got a 1 over 4 minus 2 root 2 and here I've got 20 root 2 over 4 minus 2 root 2. So I could rewrite this as 20 times root 2 times 1 over 4 minus 2 root 2. Now this is the same as part A. Now, okay, and I already rationalized this. So this is where the hence part comes in. So now I'm going to use, okay, well I made this as a half plus a quarter root 2 and multiply it by 20 root 2. So I have x equals 20 times root 2 times a half, was it plus? A half plus a quarter root 2. Now, when I multiply this, I have 20 times a half, which is 10, so I have 10 root 2, and I have 20 times a quarter, okay, now 20 times a quarter is 5, so I have plus 5, and I have root 2 times root 2, which is 2, so I end up with x equals 10 root 2 plus 10. Now 10 root 2 plus 10, they want it in the other way, so I'll, I'll write it as 10 plus 10 root 2. And there we have our answer for part B. Okay, so it's using what we, what we did in the first part to solve this problem. Okay, so you notice at this stage here, this is where part A comes into it, because 1 over 4 minus 2 root 2 is the same as what A was, and that's simplified to this. So going straight from this step to that step is perfectly fine, because this is what we showed in part A already.